And of course, uh, Lauren London just left here. That's a lot of moisture right there, a lot of big body parts. And she was an entourage. She was talking about a little role where she gave, uh, you know, my boy over here some sneakers. Uh, what, was, what, what was that? Yo, yo, Jeremy, what, what, what are you talking about uh, on, on Entourage? She said she had like Nikes or something. Do you, yeah. Do you remember that episode? I, 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 I oh. do remember the episode. Or do you remember her ass? No, I remember. I remember. <laughs> I remember the Nikes because they were gold and they had like you know they were ta they were tagged up. It was nice. Get out of here! Yeah, because you don't remember her ass. You know, I'm very professional. I keep <laughs> I keep focused. Get out of here, man. Mr. Selfridge, PBS, PBS, master masterpiece theater. If you can believe it, um, he's a dude who I think he's an OG. He was he was the original pimp in the way that coming from America too. Like you and, went out there and took over. He took over, he transformed the whole world of shopping in 1909. Mm. Uh, he basically started a store in Chicago called Marshall Fields. Okay, yeah, yeah. And he took all of, all of that history and he went over to the UK and he had this credo that the customer is always right. And in the UK to this day, and God bless them, <laughs> they're very honest people. They're like, you know, they're, they're, it's hard for them to lie. Yeah, they don't lie. <laughs> Whereas here, you know, he, you know, he really wanted to, the customer to feel like a guest. So that's the way he made them feel over there. And last year, Selfridges was voted the best store in the world. So he, here wow. he is a hundred years later. So he knew what he was doing, but he also, you know, he loved his wife and his kids, but he would go out at night and gamble. And he ended up, you know, I don't want to get too ahead of ourselves, but he ended up having an affair with this. Of course, the, man, you gotta, you gotta have the bitches in there. If you, if you he, get all that power. He, 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 <laughs> he was, he was susceptible he was susceptible to the, the to, to the things that glitter. So he was a visionary, and he had the puff daddiness at the same time. Yes, yes, he did. Oh, he had it all. <laughs> he had it all. Is Pop, <laughs> Papa's been smooth since the days of underoos. <laughs> yeah, pal, that's what I'm talking about, man. You're gonna make me do a biggie set right now. <laughs> <laughs> there, you, there you go. Is this coming from the success of Downtown Abbey? Like, you know, they decided because that that's a big show on PBS. So your show is is the next level, or? Or, or it's just like PBS has been like, you know. Well, I I think that, I don't want to say it's the next level, but I will say this. Their show takes place in the country. Our show takes place in the city. Okay. Um, And our show is like, it, it, it's paced up. It's sexier. It's kind of like there's, you know, there's, it's a bit of a younger cast. It's also funny. So, you know, it, it's interesting because here's the deal. They own period dramas over there so if we had screwed it up they would have crushed us oh yeah <laughs> they would have crushed us and we somehow had eight and a half million viewers a week in the uk which is wow. kind of unheard of so we blew up over there and you know we're having a great time they they commissioned a second series so i'm gonna head back over there and and shoot series two and get into it and i want i want my shade 45 listeners to go check it out <laughs> good check that it's, shit a, out, it's a little bit different it's, <laughs> it's different you yeah. know from seeing you from entourage is like drastic change yeah it's great but i welcome it because you want to mix it up you want to change the game that's that's kind of what it's all about you don't want to just you know keep repeating yourself that's yeah, not, i mean it's it, not pro it proves that you're an actor you know yeah a professional well i you know i was i was 40 <laughs> movies into it before i started entourage yeah, of people, course people, people forget that you know <laughs> and uh yeah so uh, an entourage was a blast and you know we're we're thinking about doing the movie and all that fun stuff so we can we can revisit that but for now it's all about mr selfridge mm -hmm. actually i was telling you before we we went on that uh you know marshall did uh, a cameo on entourage mm. and so i hit those guys up saying you know let's let's promote the the last show of our of of the entire eight year run you use twitter to do that <laughs> i yeah you know i i know he's doing it a little bit and and playing with it and uh you know he's one of those dudes who he uh he's always stayed true to himself he lays low he's ridiculously prolific oh, of you course. know I, i'm sure you saw the the um the iced tea documentary yeah, of course it was just really cool to see him you know because you rarely see him like in his studio doing his thing he's like, like that. a real hip-hop head which is kind of like rare some people are in the business to make money and stuff like that but he is like super into it like, yeah listen he and, and also you know just in terms of like i mean what he does his cadence um he, it's, it's all very original i mean and you know it's it's a tribute to him when you hear other guys and they're trying to do that but it's very hard. It, it's impossible to kind of do what he does, he, wow. you know, because because of his own particular background and whatnot, you know. And uh, so I basically said to him, you know, let's uh, let's let's create a fake beef 
<laughs> and uh and um, that's like hip hop that's like what's yeah. going on now yeah exactly because it's the closest i'll ever get to like you know being <laughs> being a hip-hop star like you know with beef you know what i mean so you know it made me feel like like you know i was a part of like you know a drake or a common beef yeah. or, or something kiss the so, makeup after uh, something crazy so la game <laughs> so i just uh, you know um i i said what did i how did i i hit him first with something i'm trying to even remember um <laughs> I, I basically wrote this thing for him where I said, you should say to me, because I actually knew that he was a, a, a fan of the movie Old School. Yeah, and I, course, and I yeah. played this nerdy character, the Dean in it, you know? And, um, <laughs> and so, I, I, so because I knew he was a fan of that, I thought, you know what? Uh, I said, why don't you say to me, hey man, I dug you in Old School and now you're just old. <laughs> and so sure enough, he hit me with that. And to this day, I have people who are like, "Oh man, he he killed you with that one," and I'm, and I'm thinking, "I wrote that for him." Sorry, I'm late, man, but I, I, I have one thing to say. I have one thing to say, and I'm I'm hoping you're gonna you're gonna lock lock in on this one. Famous line, my favorite line from from your Ari Gold period. Yes. Have no fear, the Jew is here. <laughs> Coming from a fellow Jew and Eminem's go. best friend. That was that was from the, the the entourage episode where they all go to the desert and trip on on uh, psychedelic fungus. Oh, wow. There you go. Uh, yes, indeed. Good to see you. Welcome. <laughs> the bl the blood of Abraham in the house. Yes. <laughs> Good Pesach to you. I I can actually rap in Hebrew. Oh man, we got to come back with that, man. What Triple H forty five? You want to hear in excess? Is you're like in in in, in the UK? You want to get into a hard in excess mix, or do uh, you want to hear Sting for like an hour? Sting, yeah, I want to do some. I want to do some tantric yoga nah. and meditate and listen and listen Pause. to Sting. Listen, I know what station I'm on. What are you talking about? M &M, M &M. I want to hear some. I'm different. Oh, oh okay, okay. <laughs> Two chains, man. man. Kanye West. Oh. Yeah, to 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 play the stewardesses. Uh huh. And we had a a director who literally has put white men back two hundred <laughs> years. Because he literally talks like this. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, no. I just can't imagine what's going to happen with him and Kanye right now. Hey, and he's Kanye. Like, he's like, no, okay, no, Kanye, I want you to come over here. And he's like, yo, man. And Kanye's like, yo, man, why, why don't you set the camera up over here? And I'm like going, oh, my God. Kanye is directing the director right now? And literally it happened. He's like, why don't you just do a shot right from here? And, he's like, and, and he told Melissa Ford to kind of turn sideways. No way. You know, and to be serving someone. She's in her in her little yeah. um, stewardess outfit. <laughs> That's and good. Th that's good direction because Melissa Ford looks great from the side. Oh, of course. Yes, indeed. <laughs> yeah, I mean she's she's Tuchus built, Maximus. Yes, career. indeed. She's she's built like a kind of like a, a mermaid from the future. It's fantastic. <laughs> There's a lot of moisture in that mermaid too. Yes, indeed. <laughs> she's actually an amazing woman who's really smart and cool. But we digress. Now she has a big pussy too. But anyway, so Jesus. he's. <laughs> oh no! That, I hope people know who's saying what. <laughs> Okay. No, that wasn't you, Jeremy? No, that was oh, not me. The, the views of DJ Who Kid are his and his alone, not of Shade 45, Sirius XM, or Jeremy Piven. There you go. Thank so you, he, so yeah. Kanye said, why don't you just, come on, man, shoot her from the side right here. You got to get the, he's like, well, shoot her from the side? What do you mean? <laughs> he's like, no, this angle right here, you got to get the ba dunk dunk Get that, get that, that right there. The boom, 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 right there. He's like, get, get, get the boom, boom, boom. I was like, I was like, oh, is this like a sketch from In Living Color? Like, what is, what is happening right now? And sure enough, like the director moved the camera, shot Melissa Ford from the side. And up. There you go. It's funny. I asked uh, Rashid Common. I asked him about mm -hmm. that because we did Smoke and Aces together. And I, oh so, man, and you what know a, what a movie. Yeah, it was great. It was a blast. And I'm I'm from Chicago. I am a, a, one of the few white men from Chicago. Triple o, triple O G. <laughs> That's right. Uh, was it you and Mark Wahlberg? That's it, right? No, Mark, Mark Wahlberg from Boston. Boston. I'm only fucking with him. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. No, Mark and Mark's from Boston. But Oh man, he's from Baston, Dad. Yeah, he did him dirty with that. He's a no. wicked pisser. He was, actually, he was actually very furious when we brought up his rap days. He hates that shit. He refuses to talk about it. He was like, "Fuck that shit," because we had to do, remember that scene where the dog was pulling his his pampers. We're talking about <laughs> yeah, but come on, he was doing Shade Forty Five and refused to talk about his rap days. He was scared. He just wanted to, you know, he was more worried about Bulwark Empire than spitting verses. Right? That's that's like Jason Alexander going into a, a temple on Passover and not talking about <laughs> Seinfeld. It's like, what, what are you talking about? Like, Mark, you had another life. You were a white man who was in the Funky Bunch. 
<laughs> you were an underwear model. You, you know, I mean, that was that's part of that's part of you. I I'm, mean, come on. I'm glad you weren't here the way you described it. It just sounds so crazy. <laughs> he's come a long way, though. <laughs> he has come a long he's, he's a genius. He's a prolific dude who's living his dream. He's become a, an amazing actor, producer. He's a great dad and all of these. I love the dude. Mm. Um, but everyone comes from somewhere. Well, Listen, me. I here's the, the reality. I'm the last to know everything. <laughs> I swear to you. I swear to you. I was at the Lakers game. And I saw Wahlberg. He's like, you ready, baby? You ready for this, baby? You ready, baby? I'm like, ready for what? He goes, we're going to do this, baby. You ready? You ready? Let's get, come on, let's do this, baby. I'm like, do what? What's happening? We're at the Lakers game right now. We're doing the movie, baby. You ready? Are you ready, baby? You ready? He sounds like he's on a treadmill at all times. Like out of, out of breath. <laughs> you ready, baby? Are you ready for this, baby? You ready? You ready to kill this, baby? That's kind of creepy. And uh, I was like, I didn't even, I didn't have a script. I didn't do what? So, he, so finally I was like, can someone show me a script to this movie? Yeah. And then he so, finally hooked it up. <laughs> so I finally got it. I got it. So I, when, I'm not like, you know, playing coy when like, I, you know, I'm the last to know stuff, but it's, you know, and everything happens for a reason and you get it and then you just go and do it. You All know, right. here's the deal. You know why I'm big in the, in the black community? Oh, what, what happened? Because I keep it real. I swear to God, because here, here's what the, here's what, what I feel happens mm. is that like, People can tell when they're pretentious or they're faking it. You and, can read that from a mile away. Yeah, exactly. Oh. And so that's why I, I dig it. But also what kills me is if it, it, one time Shaq came up to me. Mm. I, li I like to drop names. I drop big names. I dropped seven foot two that's biscuit over 380 pound right names. <laughs> and he goes, what's up, man? You, it's, you, you, your shit's off the hook, man. And, he, and, he, and what happens is they look around and they make sure no one's looking because you don't want to be showing too much love in public. So you want to give a little love, but look around and make sure no one's looking. British accents before you leave. This is a real question. Okay. Uh, were, were you insecure with all those British accents before you get out of here? Like you no, like I mean, look, here's the deal. I'm, I'm, I grew up on the stage. You know, I've been a stage actor since I was a kid. And um, I studied at the National Theater of Great Britain, so I, I, I've been over there. Dropping names again. Yeah, I, I mean, terrible. like, I, that's, you know, part, part of my training. So... You know, I think people think, oh, it was Entourage a, a documentary? Aren't you a, a, a Hollywood agent? Like, yeah. you know, <laughs> I was, you know, I had a long history before I, I started that show. So I love challenges. Here's the reality. Everyone on this show, Mr. Selfridge, is, is a brilliant actor, and they raised my game, you know, because wow. they were really, really good. Um, they just come in, they do their thing like it's nothing, but they're really prepared. They don't celebrate themselves or whatever. They just mm. do it, they kill it, and they move on. So I was just I was just happy to be there. I got lucky and I got this role, and uh, we premiere tomorrow night, uh, nine o'clock. It's going to be on and popping, right? Yeah, I'm going to come back and talk about it. Ugh. That <laughs> what the hell just happened to you? I don't, I don't you know. just a little Frank Ocean just came out of me. Oh. I mean, it just came out of me though. It's not like it went in me, right? right? Oh, I think it was you that I heard <laughs> on the radio. God, here. man, you, uh, dude, man. I know you mentioned you were going to rap in Hebrew. Yes. Which is obviously spontaneous. You're gonna freestyle very quickly, but no style is free. Yeah. No, no, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Nothing in life is free. Five forty six in the morning, crack a donut. Uh, no, I'm yawning. No, can you imagine if I just <laughs> did someone else's rap? <laughs> Wipe the cold from my eye. Who's this page of me? It's my brother Bob from the barber shop. Talking about the Jacket. English <laughs> Motherfuckers want to stick me from a fly paper. Yo, love, drop the caper. You guys didn't even realize who you were dealing with. You didn't Swag. realize. <laughs> You didn't realize. Bravo time, you've read. Yeah, he shame out May a rock, may a tavi out alone. You gotta hit the beatbox. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to start now, Jerry. No, no, no. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Done. I'm. You got it. I know, but you 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 gotta leave him wanting more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like crack. By the way, I think I can't tell if we did a lot of good or a lot of bad in this interview. It sounded hot though. It was very moist. Jeremy Piven, the album. 